So, guys, this is part two of the Mental Health Awareness Podcast with Mr. Uh, with Dr. Omar Khalil. So, anyway, over to you, Omar. What were you? Please. No, I was just—I was, just, was just saying, like you know, we're, we're quite lucky uh, that it's happened in this time and age, uh, rather than you know, a long time ago. Um, but with a focus on you know mental health and saying to people, you know, I've—I've I've been quite lucky. It's been very nice. What's helped helped me is uh, I've had messages from friends from all over the world, you yourself included, who've messaged me saying, you know, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, you know, uh, stay safe. I've had several people and it's quite nice. I'm like, I feel quite bad actually sometimes. It's like, well, I'm, I'm in surgery. I don't do as much as other people, but still, you know, it's quite nice to get that message. But I think, as I said, from the mental health point of view, for anyone listening to this or any of our friends or family is there are going to be issues. It's not going to be a nice ride and it's probably going to last a while. It's not going to just go away. Um, and so it's quite important that it's, it's about staying positive, but then how do you stay positive? What do you find the positivity in? Um, I'm religious. I find religion to be quite helpful. It's Ramadan. So I think it's, that's a big part of my life. But religion is personal. It depends on how you think of it. Um, it might be, you know, I, 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 I use religion. I'm prayer calms me down, things like that. Or my family. My family helped me a lot. You've said this yourself. Your family are a very, very big deal. Um, I'm in a unique situation. So I have a family of four. My mum, my dad, and my sister, we all live in different countries and we're all locked down. So we're all locked down in four different countries. But the positive side is so we've been social distancing for over a decade. So that's not been a problem. <laughs> but the, pro the, the, the positive thing is that w since the lockdown or since this pandemic yeah. started, we've been talking to each other as a four, as a family, every sure. single day. And we have not done that much, like this much in 10 years. So that's the positive side. We still have arguments within that chat. We still have, you know, half of it's telling my dad off for going to work. Half of it's telling me off to going to work. Um, uh, well, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? So, it, 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 but, that, but that's the beauty. That, that, that's the beauty, really. But I think, um, you know, for being positive is also keeping yourself busy and doing something. But I think lots of the stuff that you read or see or hear is of oh, some guys or some woman's done th this much work during this pandemic or the lockdown. I've been so productive. I've read these books. I've done it. I think people don't need to put too much pressure on themselves to be productive. If you need a week where you're doing absolutely nothing, don't do anything. I've, I've had a week. I can, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know how I might regret it later, but I, did a week of absolutely nothing when I wasn't working. If you put it together, yep. I wasn't doing anything. I was just watching films. I was watching this. I was probably talking to friends. But that's my well-being. That's what keeps me sane. Yeah. So I think that that's important as well. And things will work out. You know, I personally think things will work out somehow. Time heals most things. Um, and what I would say, I think the most kind of wise, and I'm in no position to advise people. But I think the best way to do it is just don't do anything that you're going to massively regret later. Um, be it, you know, have an argument with someone or steal or kill, stuff like that. I mean, of course, that's really extreme. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> it is really extreme. But that, those are the things that don't do anything. It's real, it's real. It's true, true. That, don't true, do anything true. that's really stupid. And it's not just harming other people. Like, don't be at home doing some stupid prank that's going to get you know you're going to lose you know a body part or something just don't do it we're all not bored we're all bored not worth the people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah some people i mean the, the the maximum we can go you know probably someone's going to give me a haircut at some point and i'm going to probably regret it and it's mad but oh well you can't do anything um exactly. but th yeah that's it really that's 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 how it's going for me that's how i think about it that's awesome, man. I really appreciate your amazing insight on, you know, mental health awareness and your day-to-day -day life, life at the moment. And um, uh, I definitely wanted to address this issue, especially with the healthcare system for first world countries. I know the UK government and the US government, well, US is, uh, you know, hopeless at the moment, unfortunately, because of Mr. Donald J. Trump. But um, <laughs> he can keep uh, playing his trumpet as long as he can. But America's doing it keeps this up. But um, anyway, 
Uh, but, but with the UK, I understand Boris has come out of, uh, he's recovered now, he's back to work. I follow the news every single day with uh, the global networks and I can understand, uh, you know, he's been very supportive with the healthcare workers, with the NHS, with um, yeah. how everyone's collaboratively wanting to, you know, uh, contribute and how they can contribute is by staying home, maintaining social distance and try just to keep trying to maintain calm. So I've realized that um, just from my perspective, uh, me having still sticking to a normal routine for the last one month, like I've just been very punctual, like literally uh, like people in the military, you know how they follow a regime. I've just been trying to follow that and it's really helping, like waking up on time, following up a routine, uh, keeping my uh, me and now, especially with Ramadan, it's pretty much intermittent fasting for most people out there who don't know what Ramadan is. Uh, it's essentially intermittent fasting, but you know, we do it for religious reasons, right? So. It's, 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 it's essentially definitely helping your body detox and, you know, uh, sort of uh, helping you uh, um, create a lot of sense of self, self-control like never before. So it really helps sort of be, you know, humble, not just humble, sort of stay grounded with how with the hardships that you face uh, across the world where people are not getting even, um, you know, three meals a day. They're probably eating one meal a day or just water for every five, six. I mean. You never know what these people are going through. So it really makes you realize before you throw away a meal or leftovers because you don't feel like it, you actually value that meal. Rather, you know, really, you really cherish the small things in life because at the end of the day, with what, what we have, even uh, we really need to be grateful for what we have because I've started, just like what you, Omar, pointed out, I've been uh, reaching out to a lot of friends, family I don't usually make time to talk to because I'm usually very busy. Uh, yeah. And it's all, it's, it's not intentional, but as you can understand now, I'm putting that effort to like really slot in some time to catch up with everyone. It feels great. I'm happy. I can, I can rest assured, say my serotonin and, and dopamine levels are quite high. Um, in, in the mornings, I get my, uh, an hour worth of uh, sunlight. I'm out under the sun uh, by myself. Again, social distancing me fully maintained and making, ensuring that, you know, I work, you know, either I'm going for a morning run or I'm jogging. And um, it, it really helps the, that, that getting your daily dose of vitamin D helps rather than just having supplements, um, having supplements to just, um, you know, uh, make up for that the, the deficiency. A lot of people, as, as you can understand, being home, as the one thing I wanted to point out, um, they're having vitamin D deficiencies at sky high levels. So we need to really address that. So my, my, coming back to the question I wanted to ask, how can you recommend a routine to people uh, on from a health ground perspective, and what can you propose that governments in regards to revamping the healthcare system? So, actually, two questions. <laughs> the first, so, I think the first question is, is yeah, you know, uh, what this is probably going to show is, uh, you know, smoking and drinking. Those are two kind of things that I can always, I always say to patients. I can always say that that you know, those are habits that if you could give away or stop, stop. You had a lot of time to yourself to discipline with family. You could probably do that. That's always a good thing. Um, eating healthy is, is underrated. You know, eating healthy is quite important. So uh, one thing I've done, I've looked, cooked a lot more than I have cooked for a while during this last month because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at home. I'm not going out or going out to eat with friends. So, you know, eating well is probably one of the most important things that you can do for your health. As you said, having a routine, getting exercise. I've been... I used to run a lot and then I completely stopped running. And then during, during the, I needed, I needed a pandemic to get back to running. That's what's happened. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, and now I started true. running again. I only needed a pandemic. Um, yeah, and, yeah. Um, but yeah, exercise, not d d trying to kind of just do what you enjoy and do what you normally do and not change everything drastically. Cause it, it, you know, it's difficult. It, it's just going to be too much for you. Um, so I think those are the things. And I think one thing that if the lockdowns have probably um, highlighted is we are still social animals, humans, and not being able to see people or having the freedom like, Joe, I'm just going to go out and see a friend or just message someone. Do you want to go for coffee? You can't not being able to do that does have an effect on you because you're like, well, yeah, I could go out for a, a coffee with my friend, but I can't now. So it's quite it's quite amazing. So I think those are things for health, really, just being disciplined, just being what you do and just making some decisions that if something you're doing that affects your body or health, have a think about it. It's not it's not easy. You know, when I talk about health, uh, drinking or um, smoking, 
I always say to patients that exactly the same thing is if someone's actually been able to give up smoking, well done to them because it's not easy. Um, but at the same time, if they're thinking about it, just do it. So, you know, don't, don't, don't ask five people, how do I do it? Just do it. Five people will give you five different things and you'll get confused and end up doing nothing. Um, so yeah, that's, exactly. that's about the I'll health talk about it, right? thing. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I don't think it's, it's the, you know, if you go out asking people with the best of intentions, you want to do it because you just want information. But when you get different kinds of information, it's, it, 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 you can't make a decision at the end. It's like, right. you know, it's like with anything in life. It's, it's anything in life. Like if you have too many options, you, you're going to be too confused to know what to actually choose because no one's going to tell you what to do. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, the second question was about, so what the healthcare systems are going to do. Um, different, so with medicine, one of the things is it's very population specific. So different countries will do different things that suit them. Um, there are, public health is very difficult in that sense that, I'll give you a very good example. If you look at countries like Bangladesh, because I can speak about Bangladesh because we're from Bangladesh and we know how, yes, how it works at home. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. If you say, oh, there aren't many cases, but you don't test enough. So how do you know? They don't test enough. There aren't enough testing to, to say, oh, yeah, we've tested 10,000 people today. 5,000 of them are positive. But in Bangladesh, they'll be like, oh, we've just tested 100 and 80 are positive. But that doesn't show how bad the pandemic, the, uh, the actual problem is in your country. In other right. countries, they've tested a lot more. Germany have tested a million and they've done really well. Um, so it, that, that's how, you know, different countries will do different things. Different countries have responded in different ways. One of the examples is closer to you, New Zealand. Everyone's really been, you know, complimentary about how New Zealand have handled the whole thing. But yep. you, also have to, well, you also have to remember that it's a very small country. And, you know, whatever they did worked perfectly for them, but it might not work yep. for a place like the USA because it's a huge right. country. Um, so different, you know, different governments will make different decisions. And I think what the, the most important thing, I'm quite happy to see, I live in Norwich, which is in kind of the east of England. And here, people have complied really, really well. So even if I went on for a run or a walk, if someone's walking to you, they will move away and go across the road or go past you. They won't come close to you, which is quite good. I'm pretty sure it's happening in Australia where if you go to the shops, everyone's got distancing going on um, and it's going on everywhere, everywhere in the world. It looks, it looks like a film, but it is true. It is quite amazing. It's true. Um, but governments will do it. I, the only thing I don't know, because no one's been able to say is how this will we come out of the lockdown. Everyone will have a set different kind of um, strategy. I'm not 100% sure what they'll end up doing. Uh, but, you know, here it sounds like the deaths are slowly coming down and the cases are plateauing yep. they've not gone down or they've not gone away completely um so we'll see to be honest with you to that answers that question we'll have to see what actually happens we don't really know no that's amazing that's something that uh, we need to all think about and um, backtrack and really understand what how we can um go about COVID-19 and come out of it stronger, faster, and with respect to how we make decisions and how we stick to decisions. And um, I really think we need, and, and I wanted to also bring about a, an amazing project that a group of engineers are doing in Bangladesh. So Axion um, um, engineers uh, are collaborating together to create uh, their own ventilators. So they're creating around a thousand units. So that's an amazing project that I wanted to mention in Bangladesh specifically. So they're uh, looking for funding, they're looking for donors, and uh, I'm a firm believer of the project. At the end of the day, the, the, we need ventilators. Now, Bangladesh, I understand uh, with all due respect. Um, uh, at, at the end of the day, I, if, if the statistics are being manipulated to look good in front of the world, I understand what, why they're doing it. But now it's the more, than, more than politics, more than anything else, it's about humanity. So. We need to really step up, step the game up, and um, come unite to, to, uh, as a youth. And mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I'll be providing um, the link for spondon ventil uh, spondon ventilators, uh, which is being created as we speak. But they're looking for people. They're looking for uh, uh, you know people who can actually make this happen. 
at the end of the day, wh- however we can contribute in any manner possible, whether it's through podcasts, whether it's through, you know, coming up with innovative solutions to really, you know, help out the doctors, help, help out people in the healthcare system. It's important that we address this, these issues or else, you know, it, who, who, who else would? Who else would? Tell me. So, um, but yeah, this wanted to, this is uh, again, um, uh, something I wanted to point out. Uh, Omar, I'll be sharing the link with you very shortly and you can have a look um, and uh, we'll go from there. But again, guys, um, this is just um, us collaborating together just for the sake of um, letting people know that guys, you have a platform here. Uh, You've got doctors, you've got people here who are actually here to hear you out. You know, at the end of the day, just speak out, speak out. Men, as you can understand, you know, we die from suicide just from from having a big ego. Come on, guys. Like, (laughs) you know, like, let's, 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 let's step down. We don't need to prove anything to anyone. Just, just, just be yourself. And if you're going through some mental trauma or any sort of mental depression, just to speak out, like, talk to us or if you're not comfortable talking to a stranger or talking to us you can always talk to your parents if you're not talk, comfortable talking to your parents yeah you can come back to us so <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's, all, <laughs> there's always an option for you to go around and whoever makes you comfortable at the end of the day you gotta make sure you're comfortable with that person they don't judge you they're not just putting words in your mouth and saying that oh, it's gonna be okay it's just a phase it is a phase but it'll pass with the right people always remember that it's, it's you gotta speak out Exactly. Me, exactly. Going through a uh, form of, form of uh, depression in the past, I've been there. I know it. I felt it. So I know for a fact everyone goes through different levels of depression. We need to speak out for it. We shouldn't be afraid for people judging you or your insurance companies, uh, you know, not giving you, you know, putting your limits up. That's not important. What's important is your health. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not alive to tell the story, what's the point having all those other things in life? Right? So... <laughs> You know what exactly. I mean? It's, it's a very serious, yeah. serious matter, guys. I'm just trying to lighten, lighten up and say it in a lighter tone, but it's a very serious matter. So, again, I uh, really do appreciate um, your time, Omar, for your I, insight, I, insights. I and uh, we'll, we'll keep the conversation rolling and going. Uh, guys, this platform is there for you to speak out and reach out to us. We're here for you. We're all in this together, and together we're always strong, divided we fall, guys. All right? We'll see you soon.